10 seconds remaining. We are live. Good afternoon and welcome to SJ at Noon. Sorry about the delay there. Apparently, uh, my co-host, Jamie Neubauer, couldn't find anything else to wear in the closet. So, uh, eight-minute delay. We're back on the air. Week two, the snowstorm's over, which postponed week two. Um, but what it did do is give us a heck of a lot of content. We have a jam-packed show. Mike Reagan, Flynn Flon head, Flynn Flon head coach, is going to join us, as well as Melville Millionaire forward Reese Newkirk. Uh, Jamie, a lot of good hockey over the weekend, and let's jump right into it. Humboldt Estevan, probably the closest series out of all of them, and that game on Saturday night down in Estevan, the last time they were at Affinity Place, 6-5 victory for the Bruins in overtime, and now the Humboldt Broncos, 7-6 victory. It was back, it was fourth, it had physicality, goal scoring, everything you wanted for the 150 fans in the stands. Yeah, how's your ticker, Estevan Humboldt fans, after that one, a 7-6 game, two one-goal games. My opinion, two top teams in the SJHL didn't disappoint. Very entertaining stuff. Absolutely. Uh, in the first game, the difference makers were WHL loans coming in. Two goals for Cole Fonstad, including the game winner. Eric Pierce got the third goal in the game. Uh, Humble Broncos were right there. It was tied 2-2 entering the third period. And then uh, if you got a chance to watch Saturday's game, wow, were you in for a little treat. Broncos had some troubles in the early going. Two shorthanded goals given up to the Estevan Bruins, but then the power play got rolling. Shuchuk with the goal, Logan Kirky three points, uh, and the Humboldt Broncos back and forth with the Estevan Bruins through the rest of, let's say, 45 minutes. And uh, what a spectacular way to kind of kick off that series. And we've talked about with this rivalry or the new divisions shifting towards north and south, we're going to get new rivalries like Broncos and Estevan or Flin Flon and, and Kindersley. Stuff that you might not ex expect to be a rivalry, but it started early here in the SJHL. Yeah, uh, when you have two teams that are expecting to win now, too, right off the hop, you know, they, they watch the power rankings to Tarnick and Scott Barney, pay attention to what the league puts out. I know that for a fact. And, um, you know, they see that, uh, you know, it's a lot of people have Humboldt 1, Estevan 2, or flip it. You know, whatever they want to put a marker down, and 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 kudos to, to those two teams for putting on a show. And I just a quick point, talk about it a bit more later. But that combination of Eddie Gallagher and Cole Fonstad for Estevan, Mason Strutt, whoever you want to put on their wing, um, boy, that's going to be a fun line to watch. Tough one to stop. They were flying, moving along. Uh, the Nipwin Hawks pick up two victories over the Melfort Mustangs, and even uh, more important and more impressive for the Hawks, they trailed two nothing in both games and able to fight back. For me, I think the Nipawin Hawks are probably the most less talked about but most dangerous team in the SJHL that kind of is flying under the radar right now. Yeah, very complete team. Jake Tremblay, Michael Makarenko, and Jake Chisholm back in the lineup mm -hmm. uh, for this weekend. They weren't in the lineup in the first week, and then they crushed LaRange anyways. So, you know, you throw in Burke Simpson, who was a guy who was an option. We talked about a guy who left yeah. and came back. Uh, you know, he's in there. They got Harlock. You know, they brought in Kersey Reach, which I think is a very sneaky good pickup from the Estevan Bruins. And, you know, with those disrespect to Eric Holba, who, who will be a good player out of the Regina Pat Seas right now, a very nice uh, job by uh, uh, Nipawin of bringing in a guy like Reach to, to shore up that team and, and help on the blue line. And obviously they got Harlock, as I said, a 933 save percentage. Played every minute so far for Ross Harlock. If he's, you know, not the, you know, pre like, considered to be the top goal in the league right now coming in, to the, the next weekend um, he's got to be it uh, he's been sensational there's lots of options obviously but uh, to me he's the one Ross Howerluck very well very well might be the best goaltender in the SJHL right now small sample size yeah. we'll see how that gets extrapolated uh, moving forward Melville versus Weyburn Weyburn in throughout the whole um, two game series one yeah. goal games for both of them and Melville needed to score with four seconds left Zach McIntyre tied it up and then they won in overtime the thing with Melville, though, they do pick up wins. They're three and one. They're first place in that um, in the division. If if we go the divisions, but North South, they're yeah. they're tied for first, of course. But five out of their six goals they scored over the weekend had either Jaden Duro or Reese Reese Newkirk uh, on the score sheet. So I'm curious to see what they're going to be able to do 
uh, once these two aren't in the lineup anymore, but it's clear that they're going to put up the points and, and pick up the wins with them two in. Yeah, and they, you know, Mike Rooney has character guys too. New Luke Nikwama was a winner in in, uh, in U18, and he's a, a very good player too. You know McIntyre as well as anybody watching him closely uh, with Humboldt. He was part of that Spadafora trade. Um, I guess it was last year, but uh, I, you know, either way, uh, there is guts and heart in that in that Melville locker room. Obviously, they added Cole Stevenson, who I, I believe is uh, s- suspended though for this weekend. But um, you know, they ran into Joseph Young a little bit too. You know, Weyburn is a team that. Uh, it has a lot of new pieces in transition. Rich Pilon's trying to find an identity with that Weyburn team. Um, you know, Schween and Cunningham are a very nice pairing together as well. Uh, but Joe Young, again, putting on a show, uh, you know, and we heard Nick Nielsen talk about it. I hope he's okay that I, that I bring this up because he, he mentioned it in our, in our group chat. You know, he said, uh, you know, Joe Young, it was the reason why Weyburn got a point uh, a couple nights ago, and he is a special goalie as well for the Red Wings. Uh, Battleford and LaRange, we'll move into that. Quick points, because we do want to get towards our yep. SJHL Players of the Week. LaRange is one I just can't put my finger on right now. I know they can score a lot of goals. I think they're going to give up a lot of goals. One thing about the Ice Wolves, though, is if you're playing against them, you're going to know you just played against them. You're going to yep. feel it the next day. They are on bodies, on pucks, and very physical. Fun team yep. to watch. I just don't know where they're going to kind of slot in right now. Yeah, I mean, what we've seen, you know, all Holden Knights does is score goals. You know, he came in last year uh, from the BCHL to LaRange and scored six goals in 12 games for LaRange. And all of a sudden, he, this year, he's got three goals in three games as well. You know, he's a real piece. There's a lot of weapons going forward for LaRange. I think they're going to have to figure it out, you know, going the other direction. Obviously, Spencer Kennedy, uh, you know, is as kind of old school both ways in terms of He'll beat you up and then put the puck in the net too. You talk about you'll feel it when you play LaRange. And uh, though they play hard for Kevin Kaminsky, that team did last year. They're going to do it again this year. And the final one, the Yorkton Terriers against the Notre Dame Hounds. Just one game because you'll be on the call yeah. today. It's down in Notre Dame at 8 p.m. Uh, Hounds were up 2 nothing, and Yorkton, a lot of firepower there, came back in a 6-2 victory. Yeah, there was it was a good first 25 minutes on the road for Brett Pilkington's team uh, in Yorkton. The Ethan Stuckless, Andrew Stuckless, Jake Dale line was absolutely flying. And those uh, Stuckless brothers from Newfoundland are going to put on a show this year, I believe. But, um, you know, the, t- the Hounds showed their youth, I think, got snowed in a little bit for the, the last 20, 15 minutes or so of the second period. Um, you know, brought it pretty well in the third, but... Um, again, that you saw that Yorkton team a couple of weekends yep. ago. You give them an inch, they'll take a mile. That's the way that they're going to be, and they're going to be tough to stop. One thing I want to point out here, just before we get into our players of the week in the SGHL, 67 players right now are at a point per game or higher. There's 10 at two points per game or higher. The yeah. offense is everywhere in the SGHL, and it's so fun to watch. We'll get right into it before we welcome in uh, Mike Reagan, of course, of the Flynn Fawn Bombers. Your SJHL Players of the Week will start it with the Direct West Rookie of the Week. It went to Melville Millionaires and Chase Berthlet, who had four goal, four games played. Of course, we are carrying it back from the start of the regular season. Three assists, a great start for the rookie. The Sasquatel Goaltender of the Week is Joel Favreau. Melfort, we weren't sure what was going to happen in net after losing Sean Parkinson, but it looks like they got another one right through the pipeline, and Joel Favreau is one to watch. Mayfair Diagnostics, D-Man of the Year. No surprise to start, but he's having Doug Scott 30 points in 26 games last year, including 19 power play points and 10 goals. Well, he's got seven points in the first four. The captain of the Humboldt Broncos is leading the way on the back end. And then your RBC Player of the Week. And we'll get to your three stars in a couple seconds here. You've made your third star. I'm not sure how seven points in three games wasn't enough for you, but the RBC Player of the Week is Logan Kirky, who has nine points in four games, and he's neck and neck tied with Reese Newkirk, who you'll hear at about 1240 tonight. Yeah, well, to, to defend myself, I'll talk about that. You know, I, for me, there were three three first stars. So, yeah, you know, I, you I, that, that's kind of way, the way I picked it. Yeah. Um, funny story about Kirky quickly. My daughter calls turkey kirky so over thanksgiving i said what did you eat she said kirky so well, every time we have turkey i think about him so well kirky was sure eating it up on the score sheet these yeah. past uh, three or four games there start the season uh just our own thoughts on the three stars of the week that yeah. we usually compile i have eddie gallagher who you mentioned works so well with cole fonstad and i think if fonstad when he does go back gallagher is a player that he'll be able to pick up whatever slack is needed uh, especially when estevan gets griffin asha morose and there are other players who are a little banged up back uh He's fun to watch. He is, he's fast. He's gritty. Uh, you can put the puck in the back of the net. I have Reese Newkirk with five points in two games as my second star, and then Logan Kirk, he's my first star, seven points in three games. Yeah, sure. Can't, you know, can't, can't disagree with, uh, with those ones. Yeah, I did have Logan Kirk as, as the third star. 
Um, you know, I think the goals were coming from all directions in that in that, especially the second game of that series. But obviously, Logan is he looks like he's unstoppable to start with this season. I think he'll put up 40 goals if, plus this year for the Broncos. Uh, you know, Reese Newkirk. Um, you know, we'll talk to him later in the show. Uh, you know, he is electric. He is quick. He is very good on the faceoff. Dot. I love guys that win win faceoffs. Um, he's also gritty and he's come in and he's worked hard for Melville and you don't, you know, again, it's been a mixed bag with WHLers. We can talk about their effectiveness, but he's been very effective. Uh, you know, every, every game for Melville, maybe with the exception of the very first preseason game. Um, and Duro with a beautiful goal there in, in overtime, got to mention him too. Uh, and then my first star, we talked about him a bit, Ross Harlech. Uh, he's allowed six goals on only na- 90 shots, only six goals on 90 shots so far this year for Nippo and he's played every minute. Uh, in all three wins and uh, you know he's a big 0-1 he was the Spokane Chiefs pick uh, he plays in a good system for goalies we talked about how his numbers will be good uh, but he's been great so far this year um, you know for a Nippa win team that you forget was without Jake Lynchision to start with so um, you know it's a bit of a work in progress on the back end for Doug Johnson's team in Nippa win and, uh, and Ross has still been magnificent no excuses from him so he, I, he deserves my first and star. he's gonna be a workhouse workhorse throughout yeah. the, the season for Doug Johnson and the Nippa win Hawks those are your three stars, your SJHL Players of the Week, your weekly recap, and we'll be right back. We'll welcome in Flynn Fall. Now, because of RBC Training Ground. They know what they're doing, how they're doing it, and when you work with Direct West, things are good. There's no going backwards, they're moving forward. My business would not be where it is today without the help of Direct West to help me with my website. It starts as a game. Then it becomes a way of life. Now, because of RBC Training Ground, you're on the world stage. Sign up for free at rbctrainingground.ca. You need to adapt and you need to move forward. You can't be stuck in 1920. Direct West is on the top of their game. They know what they're doing, how they're doing it, and when you work with Direct West, things are good. There's no going backwards, they're moving forward. My business would not be where it is today without the help of Direct West to help me with my website and my Facebook and all my online presence. I've worked with Direct West for about 10 years and it's been a great experience. in home Wi-Fi from SaskTel. Don't hesitate. Don't think about, you know, am I smart enough for this? Um, am I good enough for this? You are. Do it. Take the leap of faith because it was definitely one of the best decisions I made my entire life. Right, can you hear me now? Sick of sacrificing not, a whole wall okay, to ugly good. test blotches? Now you can test paint samples on your own walls without yeah, dirtying well, a well, single thanks. brush. Select your colors, receive your removable paint samples by mail, and make your decision. Save time, save money, no mess, and accurate. We help you test today's colors right where you want them. Say see ya to ugly test splotches and hello paint. <laughs> Welcome back to SJ at Noon. My name is Rory McGoran alongside my co-host, The Noobs. And uh, very happy and very pleased to welcome in Flynn Flon Bombers head coach, Mike Reagan. Mike, how's everything going over there? Under the circumstances, not too bad. I guess uh, we're going to find out a lot of information here today, and uh, hopefully it's all positive for, for us here in Flynn Flon. Absolutely, and that's what the whole league is hoping for as well. Before we sort of get into... Uh, what's happening and what you know moving ahead with the Flint Flon Bombers. I just want to go back to last year. Um, myself working for the Humboldt Broncos uh, against the Flint Flon Bombers in the playoff series. 
there was a lot of high hopes for the roster you assembled heading into the playoffs last year, and then it was cut short due to the coronavirus, of course. Uh, what was sort of the feeling in the dressing room after that? And as a coach, what do you say to these players, especially the 20-year-olds who, who had their eyes set on a championship? Well, you know, at the time, we really didn't know that uh, we were going to get shut down. You know, we had uh, won an emotional game. Uh, looking back at that, we had three defensemen that were out of the lineup. We had uh, Caleb Franklin playing, um, you know, one of our forwards playing defense. And we found out he, he was a pretty good defenseman. Uh, we wish we would have found out that earlier on in the year. But, uh, um, you know, Cal Shell was remarkable in that game. And I thought that was the best game the Broncos played in the series. And, uh um, you know, we we fought for a, a big win there. Seven minutes left, I think we scored to, to go ahead. And, um, you know, it was a very emotional situation in the dressing room, obviously excited about uh, moving on to the next round. And, um, you know, it was the next day that we kind of found out. And, you know, I've, I'm always, uh, you know, an optimistic. And, uh, you know, I thought there was going to be some point that we would uh, be able to finish the, the playoffs, you know, whether it be in June or July, I know, um, had many conversations with Bill about different scenarios. Uh, one of the things proposed was even a Memorial Cup style, um, you know, championship, I guess, um, you know, in Saskatoon or, or Regina, if possible. You know, I think there was a lot of teams that uh, wanted to, you know, have some closure to the season. And it was really difficult uh, once we had to say goodbye to the, the guys. You know, these guys pour their heart and soul into uh, a season uh, uh, amongst a lot of other people, not just, uh, you know, the staff, but uh, your board members, uh, you know, your volunteers and your sponsors and everything like that. And and we feel, felt very confident in our team. You know, we were playing really good hockey and um, felt good about moving on. Yeah, for sure. Uh, hey, Mike, first of all, love uh, love the muzzy. Keep that up. Uh pretty disturbed situation i'm sure you're in touch with uh you know all your players right now uh you know what have you been saying to them and how have you been keeping them uh you know both mentally and physically sharp uh, when there's so much uncertainty at the moment it's tough because uh you know we just we don't have a lot of answers right now and again going back to being a fairly positive guy and and always looking for um the positive in every situation um you know we've just told the guys that this is just another part of the challenge in 2020 and uh you know if uh you know we get through this situation and, and like i said hopefully this afternoon we find out some some good information and and that i i'm a big believer in adversity makes you stronger and uh there's been a lot of challenges uh for everybody in 2020 and not just um you know hockey teams and and players and that sort of thing but uh you know we're we're kind of uh, got the blinders on when it comes to being laser focused in what we have to do. And, uh, um, you know, we've had a few conversations with the players, but, you know, with the restrictions that we have, we can't really get together as a big group and stuff like that. We're, we're looking at all options available to us. And, um, you know, the guys have had a pretty good uh, attitude. You know, I think kids these days are pretty resilient. You know, you can throw a lot at them. And um, that's something that we preach as, as a staff is, you know, being resilient and, and, um, you know, things are going to get thrown at you and, and how do you handle them? And, uh, this is just one more thing that we've got to overcome here. And, and, uh, hopefully we're playing hockey this Friday, Saturday in Battleford. Yeah. Although it's, uh, you know, it's away from the ice and for people who, who might not know, um, Flint Flon, of course, in Manitoba and they're placed under critical red right now because of the COVID-19 pandemic. So all sporting facilities have been closed for the time being, um, you, you mentioned it. Uh, it's adversity, which is something that's uh, incredibly important in hockey. Although this is away from the ice, so you said you're going to ha have some more information today, and we hope it's uh, we hope it's positive for the Flin Flon Bombers. Another big part of this season uh, before that was mentioned was the addition of the WHL players and the loans. Uh, you did bring a couple in, but just when that information and that news sort of broke, how where did you stand, and and how did you feel about it? Were you for it? Were you against it? And and sort of have you come full circle, and where are you now regarding the news of the WHL loans? Well, I think we're excited uh, in, in one aspect. We've got a local player here, Justin Lees, that plays mm -hmm. for the Vancouver Giants. And, um, you know, I was really hoping that he was going to be a part of our team last year as a 16-year-old. And, um, you know, I know that he, he loves being from Flim Flon and, and uh, growing up being a bomber and, and that sort of thing. But uh, obviously the opportunity with the Vancouver Giants, uh, you're not going to pass that up when you're you're his age and, 
And, uh, you know, so this is a, a, a great way for him to be a bomber for the time being and play in front of his family and friends, although it's, it's only been one game, um, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, so we're excited from that aspect. We also have uh, Brad and, and Riley uh, Ganell and, and, you know, for a lot of people out there that don't know their their grandfather, um, you know, a pretty historic uh, figure in himself with the Bomber organization, uh, won the Memorial Cup uh, with the Bombers and, uh, you know, a legendary coach here. So, you know, they've got a strong tie to to Flim Flon and, and have basically spent their summers here since they were youngsters. And, uh, you know, so it was very exciting that we were able to get them. So, you know, there's three guys with a local tie and then uh, Rhett Reinhardt, his, his father played for the Bombers and actually – uh, billeted at my place when I was a kid so um, there's a connection there as well and and uh, Dwayne's uh, did some scouting for us over the years and and you know I know he's very passionate about being a flim flam bomber so you know that's our fourth connection to the team and then uh, you know with Ryland Thiessen, um he's a guy that's been on our list for uh, a number of years and is really good friends with uh, Mason Caspic so um, you know they're we weren't just going to bring in anybody and, and, and that sort of thing. We are looking for guys that, you know, uh, wanted to be bombers and had a connection to the organization and, and that, and, you know, I, I've been asked this a lot, how, how do I feel about, you know, the Western league guys and, and that sort of thing being in the league. And I think it, it depends on how you look at it. You can spin it, you know, a couple different ways and everybody's got their own reason for why they've got who they've got and, and that sort of thing. Um, and it's not my, job to judge what other teams are doing you know uh the melville millionaires have to do what's best for the melville millionaires the yorkton terriers same thing the humble broncos the same thing and um for me i i don't know the circumstances surrounded uh surrounding each team so it's it's not really uh fair for me to comment on why a team's doing this and why a team's doing that like i said uh for us we felt that uh there's a lot of connections to the bomber organization and uh we felt that, uh, you know, it, it was going to be a win-win for us. You know, there, there's some guys that um, maybe don't get as much ice time. Yeah, but I think that uh, um, the way these guys practice and the way they prepare, and, and they're obviously really good players, they're going to make our, our young guys better in practice each and every day. And um, hopefully, you know, we're, we're both benefiting from it uh, from the standpoint that the Western League guys get uh, an opportunity to play and, and work on their game and, and that sort of thing. And uh, hopefully we reap the benefits from, um, you know, getting a few more wins than, than we wouldn't have. And, uh, you know, so far it hasn't started out great with us being 0-2, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of, that's gone on here. I know, um, you know, I don't I don't like to make excuses or, or look at this as an excuse, but, uh, you know, Tuesday we, we hit the boys with a lot of uh, tough information with finding out that, you uh, you know, that we're in a code red and that Thursday, um, basically the community was going to be shut down. So there was a lot on their minds in that, uh, although I don't know if it would have made a difference. Melford played a pretty good game and got to give them full marks for the way they came into uh, our building and, and were able to take it to us. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You mentioned all the history of the Flint Fawn Bombers. Everyone knows how rich it is. And the final one for you here before uh, uh, we let you go, to, in order to get this history and build it, it starts with young players coming in through the system and creating a name for themselves in the organization. One that had a lot of hype around him and a potential rookie of the year moving forward was Cole Dupero, second uh, in the Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, pardon me, under 18 AAA league. Last year as a rookie in terms of points, one and done, makes the jump. Uh, just what have you seen out of him and how bright is his future? Yeah, I think Cole's going to be a great player. You know, um, it takes time for certain guys. You know, I take a, a look at, uh, you know, Donovan Houle. Um, mm. He came in as an 18-year-old, and, and I think uh, he scored in his first game and then didn't score another goal for, I, I think it was 17 games or something like that. And then at the end of the year against Notre Dame in the playoffs, he had six goals in four games. And obviously we know how good of a player he turned out to be at 20 years old. Then you got a guy like Tristan Lemaire last year that comes in and puts up 62 points in his rookie season, um, you know, and is, is off to Denver in a year's time. Uh, you know, Cole's going to find his own path, and it's, uh, you know, not necessary that he he goes down the same route that uh, a Donovan does, did or, or a, a Tristan Lemaire. Um, Cole's a great player. He's, you know, adjusting to the league, adjusting to the speed, adjusting to the time and space. Um, again, we're only two games into the season. 
So it's really tough to, to say where, where he's at right now. But uh, I see bright things in, in his future here, and, and he's a tremendous kid. You know, the one thing about Cole is his attitude is, is unbelievable. He comes in and, and uh, you know, he, he, he works hard every day, and, and he's just a sponge. And, and uh, you know, I think that the, the approach that you, you take to the game is a huge part of uh, a player's success. And, um, you know, there's some guys that want it right now, and, and I think we live in a society that we want everything, you know, right away and and sometimes it doesn't come to to people as quick as others and and so you got to be patient so let the process you know work its its way out and uh you know i i think that cole you're going to find uh cole is going to be a very good flim flam bomber here for the next couple of years mike thank you so much uh for everything here we hope the news that you get today is good news and and we see the bombers uh back here in the sjhl playing the hockey that that we're used to seeing them play thanks again for joining us yeah, thanks very much, guys. I think this is uh, an incredible thing that you guys are doing. I think it's exciting for our fans. Uh, you know, it's it's always nice when you have something fresh and, and to look forward to. And uh, uh, great job by uh, by you guys in the SJHL. So thanks very much. Yep. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks very, very much. much. Thanks, thanks for Mike. bringing back the, the uh, tough memory of who will uh, tearing the hounds apart a couple of years ago, too. Appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime, Nuge. There was Mike Reagan, the head coach of the Flint Fawn Bombers. He talked about a few players that qualified for Division I scholarships. We'll get to that next. It's your direct West Player Spotlights on SJ at Noon. with internet and optimum in-home Wi-Fi from SaskTel. Healthy, well-cared-for cows produce high-quality milk, just like a well-coached team produces quality hockey players. So when you're buying dairy products, check to ensure it is 100% Canadian. You'll be helping out all Canadian dairy farmers. we got time for a quick game before chores. Yay! Which team gets Grandpa? You need to adapt and you need to move forward. You can't be stuck in 1920. Direct West is on the top of their game. They know what they're doing, how they're doing it, and when you work with Direct West, things are good. There's no going backwards, they're moving forward. My business would not be where it is today without the help of Direct West to help me with my website and my Facebook and all my online presence. I've worked with Direct West for about 10 years and it's been a great experience. It starts as a game. Then it becomes a way of life. Now, because of RBC Training Ground, you're on the world stage. Sign up for free at rbctrainingground.ca. Welcome back to SJ at Noon. Rory McGoran alongside Nugsy there. I want to be, give a big thanks to Mike Reagan, the Flin Flon Bombers head coach. And we could have asked him more questions, but we might have had to have him on for the whole hour, given how detailed he, his answers were. He, he, he was fantastic. He'd we be love down, I think, too. <laughs> uh, let's get right into your, your um, Direct West player spotlight profiles. I'll let you go first. I had the, you know, the privilege of watching number two games, and he took another step forward in terms of his development and his presence on the ice. Uh, your feature is Estevan Bruins forward Eddie Gallagher. Yeah, so the beginning of the 2018-19 season, the Hounds and uh, Estevan Bruins had a young guns game. There was only rookies, guys who never played the game before, and uh, Eddie Gallagher just opened my eyes. I was like, who is this kid? Uh, you know, he's, he had 50 points last year in 56 games. Again, 
Um, you know, are, are they the, the most eye-popping numbers? You know, it did, didn't really have to be. It was a relatively deep Estevan forward core uh, a year ago. He's off to a real hard start oh, yeah. this year. We talked about him playing with uh, with Cole Fonstad and Mason Strutt on the other wing or whoever whoever it is that Tetronic puts on their wing. But the thing that I really love about uh, Eddie Gallagher is he's always switched on. He's always intense. He never takes shifts off. You know, even from that... Um, young guns game you know he's a saint albert saint albert kid he's a in his 2000 birth year he's a late 2000 birth year um but still just the intensity the the passion with which he plays again never never shuts off you know you can see guys minds wandering once in a while shift here or there but eddie's always in it and he's always in the mix and you know he's a great great passer he's certainly a pass first kid but he's all in a lot of right spots to score some goals too um, and yeah, he's certainly a handful in the defensive zone too. So you know, Jason Tatarnik, I'm sure just uh, sees him as a, another dream kid to coach because he plays a hard game, 200 feet of the ice. Not a big guy, but he's got really quick boots. You know, great pass, a great vision too. And again, never shuts off. I love his intensity. Yeah, the one thing about him is I, he's extremely difficult to play against. Yeah. And I mean, crazy if I say it, but is there similarities between him and the Montreal Canadiens in Brendan Gallagher? <laughs> Very similar players. Yeah. Yeah, hard to play against. They never they have that switch. It's on when the puck drops, and yeah. it doesn't go off. And yeah. offensive ability, good in his own zone, and the Estevan Bruins there. And like I said, he plays with yeah. Cole Fonstad, so that's an amazing mm-hmm. teammate to have. But even when Cole goes back to the WHL, Eddie Gallagher, I don't think is going to take a step back. He is yeah. he is a powerhouse for the he, Bruins. He's so disciplined too. I mean, he only had four pims last yeah. year, and he do, it's not like he's a soft kid at all. He plays hard. He's in your face. He'll, he'll shove you back. But he only had four pims last yeah. year. Amazing. So disciplined too. Like. You know, it's he, he seems like he's a real complete pack, and I'm sure Tatarnik just loves coaching. Absolutely, and when the scouts are watching the Estevan Bruins, I'm sure that Eddie Gallagher is one that they're yeah. keen on. Uh, I'm flipping it over uh, back up into the North Division now. Unfortunately for the Kindersley Clippers, they've only had one game. Yeah. Their one against the Battleford's North Stars canceled due to the snowstorm, and now they were in the series with the Flin Flon Bombers, and that got postponed due to uh, the Manitoba governing rules with the COVID-19 pandemic. Mm-hmm. But last year, one of two O three 3 defensemen that played the majority of the year Michael Newmeyer, along with Broncos' Noah Barlaghi. Michael Newmeyer is my spotlight because watching him on the ice as a 16-year-old, I thought he was the best defenseman on the ice in some games that young, which is incredible to see. And I talked to Ken Plackin, the new head coach of the Kindersley Clippers last night, and asked him just what is it about Michael that sort of jumps off the page for you and sets that potential at a very high bar? And he just said he loves hockey. You can't get him off the ice. You, your, your practice is over. He's still on there. Zamboni wants to come on, and he's like, giving the stop sign out he can't can't get off the ice and then that you pair it with his hockey iq at a young age how high level it is already his vision and his skating ability he said those three things is what separates him from the rest of the pack and once again he's only 17 right now though that this is a player although they only played one games they will play more that the scouts need to have their eye on michael newmeyer of the kinders and clippers yeah he, he left notre dame uh the, the hounds midget triple a year ago and went straight uh, to the top pairing for Larry Wintoniak and the Kinders yeah. League Clippers. That, so that's what they think of him in Kinders League, right? He played with Brandon Borbley. Uh, felt like Borbley was in the SJ forever. Um, you know, again, so 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 smart. Never seems to make a mistake, uh, you know, in, in any zone. And, um, you know, so composed. You know, obviously there's an element of playing with his big brother, too. That was another element of, of trying to get him out of uh, Notre Dame and play, play for Kinders League uh, sort of right away there. And what a prospect he's you know, turned into, um, you know, another, one element of, of Devin Prod in the U18 Hounds last year is there was a lot of pieces uh, on the blue line. And, and uh, you know, you could say that they were, um, you know, the, the depth kind of maybe made uh, Newmeyer not stand out as much uh, as he has, uh, you know, as a clipper. Um, but, uh, you know, got to give the, the young man a lot of credit. And again, yeah. as, as an 03 birth year, jumping into a top pairing straight from midget. And didn't look out of place. Did not look out of place once. So, Give him huge credit for sure. Michael Newmeyer, the Clippers, and Eddie Gallagher, this week's Direct West Player Spotlight. Uh, still, obviously, D1 scholarship eligibility for both of them. Yeah. And uh, scouts, get your eyes on them because they're two talented players in the SJHL. Yeah, Matt, for sure. And a good start for the Clippers, too. Can't hurt that uh, 100%. to win, for sure. 100%. Uh, yeah. Next up, we're going to welcome in. It's a WHL loan, and he's lighting up with the Melville Millionaires. Reese Newkirk is next on SJ at Noon. <laughs> It's 
starts as a game. Then it becomes a way of life. Now, because of RBC Training Ground, you're on the world stage. Sign up for free at rbctrainingground.ca. You need to adapt and you need to move forward. You can't be stuck in 1920. Direct West is on the top of their game. They know what they're doing, how they're doing it, and when you work with Direct West, things are good. There is no going backwards, they're moving forward. My business would not be where it is today without the help of Direct West to help me with my website and my Facebook and all my online presence. I've worked with Direct West for about 10 years and it's been a great experience. Internet and optimum in home Wi Fi from SASTEL. Don't hesitate. Don't think about, you know, am I smart enough for this? Um, am I good enough for this? You are. Do it. Take the leap of faith because it was definitely one of the best decisions I made in my entire life. Six sacrificing a whole wall to ugly test blotches? Now you can test paint samples on the Aggle Brush. Select your colors, receive your it's removal. It's all coming to Same time, save money, no mess, and accurate. We help you test today's colors right where you want them. Say see ya to ugly test splotches and hello paint. It starts as a game. Then it becomes a way of life. Now, because of RBC Training Ground, you're on the world stage. Sign up for free at rbctrainingground.ca. You need to adapt and you need to move forward. You can't be stuck in 1920. Direct West is on the top of their game. They know what they're doing, how they're doing it, and when you work with Direct West, things are good. There's no going backwards, they're moving forward. My business would not be where it is today without the help of Direct West to help me with my website and my Facebook and all my online presence. I've worked with Direct West for about 10 years and it's been a great experience. Internet and Optimum in Home Wi Fi from SASTEL. Welcome back to SJ at Noon. Uh, just quick apologies, of course. We were unable to connect with Reese Newkirk. I wasn't sure if it was maybe Mike Reagan who broke the system with that interview. Too uh, quality. Too good quality. It, was, it was quality. Um, uh, it, it is week two here, and we had one out of two, but we will rebook Reese Newkirk for everyone that did tune in to watch uh, or listen to him and, and what he thought about joining the league and, and just. Uh, joining the Melville Millionaires and getting off the start that he did. Uh, we'll rebook him for next week, but right now we got to jump right into our Fast Five because we are running, and we only have about five minutes left. So time for Fast Five here, Nugsy, starting with. You wanted to bring it up. We're both broadcasters in the league, mm -hmm. and uh, you've been to all the buildings in the SJHL. What's yeah. your favorite press box to call a game in? I got two quick ones. Weyburn, because it's big and comfortable, and I like a little bit of space. <laughs> Flin Flon Bombers, 
because the Whitney Forum is electric at the at the worst of times. Fantastic arena. I love calling games that you're right in the action. Don't call me biased. I, I, the one reason I like Humboldt's box is because of the Jumbotron, and it's unlike anything you get in the SGHL. Be able to see those replays, be able to get the angles on different looks. It just helps broadcast the call. And again, call me crazy. Is it not intense to be in LaRange's press box? It is right on I top of the ice. I love it. You can get hit by a puck. Your life, that could be your life. Right you got to keep your head on the swivel in yeah. there and nip win. That's for sure. Uh, topic two, a big social media conversation after the Broncos and Estevan game. King Cunningham, Austin King Cunningham, their captain, gets kicked out of the game, gets a major. And a lot of people looked at that replay and said they didn't see him involved in anything. What did you think? Yeah, I mean, you know, I've seen him, you know, have an, you know, have a situation where he's definitely premeditated something that that could get him in trouble. I don't think that was a situation like this. I think Schultz uh, was put in a bad position after uh, Ryder Pearson pushed him, uh, and then Cunningham was kind of in a natural stick position and gave him a little shot. But I don't think it was anything, uh, anything too crazy. Certainly, Cunningham has done uh, a lot worse. Yeah, he was he was in the mix. Uh, I think he shouldn't have got kicked out of the game. But then again, the referees already have a hard yeah. job as it is. Yeah. And there was a big scrum with about four bodies in it. And King Cunningham was a part of it. If they thought they saw something, they had a better look than anyone watching yeah. a hockey TV feed. So mm -hmm. air on the side of them, I guess. Yeah. Now we're switching to another Estevan Bruins highlight in topic number three, but it might be an early candidate for goal of the year. How about yeah. the goal by Colfon's dad? Yeah, so, you know, at the end of a shift, uh, his line mates were, were going off, and he was kind of alone. He's like, you know, I might as well try something fancy, and he did, and, you know, I think uh, probably McNabb uh, would have liked it back too, but, again, it was a beautiful finish, top top corner, beautiful. Uh, you know, had, had McNabb sliding, as I said, but uh, – Again, not too many guys in this league could do that. And I think this is one that's going to infuriate Scott Barney and Curtis Tunniff because roll back the tape, Humboldt Broncos had the offensive pressure for about two minutes. Yeah. Prior to that, they were able to get two line changes in, and Cole Fonstead takes it out himself, yeah, undresses can. the Broncos defenseman, and goes roof on Dean McNabb. Absolutely beautiful goal and an early one for your highlight of the year. And yeah, you can see the highlight uh, just on the screen there. Great job by the tech people here uh, working hard. Uh, but I think, again, the, the decor – uh, there for, for Humboldt, again, maybe take the body in that situation. Yeah, we'll say medium work. Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> they're, they're a bunch of geniuses for sure. Hey, they look, they look good. Uh, f topic four, it's our new power rankings. They change every week. Who's your top three? Uh, yeah, it's staying the same as it, uh, as it has been. Humboldt uh, show that they can play with anybody. Estevan show that they can play with anybody. And the Yorkton Terriers, again, all, all those guns, I saw them in person. You give them an inch, they'll take a mile. They lost two against Humboldt, but I'm still keeping them uh, top three. Nipwin, well, three, that's, three B. That's where I'll come in because I yeah. have Nipwin bumping out the Yorkton Terriers, yeah. and I have Humboldt, Estevan, Nipwin. Now is my top three power rankings right now in the SGHL. Topic five, it's the week preview, and I know you're going to be on the call today. Notre Dame against Yorkton. We're going to have LaRange against Nippowin tomorrow, and then your weekend is packed. Five games on Friday and a full slate in the SGHL. All 12 teams scheduled to be in action on Saturday, and what better than all 12 teams SGHL Saturday night because uh, those two teams are going to try to kill each other. It's going to be absolutely fun. That's going to do it for us here on week two. Uh, again, apologies to Reese Newkirk. We will book him. And everyone that wanted to listen to him, please rejoin us in the next coming weeks. And we'll have Newkirk back on along with more coaches, possible broadcasters, more players, more spotlights. And with the COVID-19 pandemic, whatever you can to support each team in your community, please do so. A lot of them have online initiatives, 50-50s, auctions going on. Just uh, take a look at what your team is doing. And if you can, try to support them because uh, the teams mean to the community and the community community means so much to the team. For Jamie Neugebauer, I'm Rory McGoran. We'll be back next week, SJ at noon.